if you're using multi-sig, it doesn't even matter if your wallet vendor is malicious and has included some kind of backdoor. Your funds are still secure. I've had a number of requests that relate to creating and using multi-sig wallets and you know while a multi-sig wallet can significantly improve the security of how you hold your Bitcoin, there are also some complexities to it that make it really easy to screw up, especially for newbies. So rather than jumping straight into a video that looks at how to do multi-sig using Electrum or Sparrow or something like that, I'm actually going to start first with a video that looks at how to use a multi-sig wallet using the Casa multi-sig product. The reason I'll be looking at Casa is it is easy to use. You know, it's just got a mobile app. It is non-custodial in that they don't control your funds or have access to them at any time. And it has best practice baked in. So it's a fantastic service, not only for securing your Bitcoin, but for learning how to do multi-sig properly. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. So before we go any further, just a 30 second explanation of what multi-sig actually is. So what you're probably used to is a single signature wallet. And whether this is a hardware wallet or a software wallet, uh, it doesn't really matter. Basically the point is you only need the private keys from one wallet to be able to sign and send a transaction. And what multi-sig allows you to do is to actually use the private keys off a number of devices. What makes this powerful is you can also decide that you might only need two of the three devices to be present to be able to sign and send a transaction, meaning that you not only have removed a single point of failure and single point of trust in any of these devices, but you could also lose one of them entirely and still be able to successfully send transactions. One of the things important to mention is you can use your hardware wallet both as part of a multi-signature wallet and as part of a standard single signature wallet at the same time. You know, using your wallet with Casa will not affect any of the existing funds or accounts that you have associated with your hardware wallet. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is just run through how to use the Casa product as a normal user would use it. This example that I run through is gonna take the opportunity to use all four of the hardware wallets that Casa supports. That is Ledger devices, Trezor devices, the cold card, and now also the Keystone, which support was just recently Added. For those who want to do more of a deep dive into multi-sig, I'll also be following this up with a more technical video that looks at how to create a watch-only wallet for Casa, which uh, removes uh, any trust you have to place in the Casa app, runs through how to actually recreate the uh, wallet using Sparrow, and also how to add hardware address verification to your Casa wallet. Addressing what I see as Casa's main weakness, which is verifying the addresses used when you receive Bitcoin into your Casa wallet. All right, so we'll just start off on Casa's website website and I'll just sign in because I've already got an account and with Casa everything actually happens in their app so we'll just download that there it is so that's the app we want so we'll just say get so basically now we just need to log in with that account that we had before so this key shield is what Casa calls multi-sig and you can actually use the Casa wallet just as a single signature wallet. That's just the normal type of wallet you're used to, but we'll just generate this. So for this video, Casa just gave me access to the platinum level features, though it is worth saying if you did have a platinum or above level account, uh, Casa also provides you with all of the hardware wallets you need as well as a guided onboarding process. You're not just left to your own devices. The uh, Platinum level, it defaults to a 3 of 5 multi-signature setup. And one of those keys is actually going to be a recovery key. So that's one that Casa actually stores uh, on their end. That means that uh, you can lose up to two of these different keys here and still be able to access your funds using the recovery key. This recovery key isn't something you need to use during normal operation and it's not enough for them to be able to access your funds. So we'll just set up recovery key, set photo verification. Has a built-in delay in there for a week with Casa Gold and uh, a few days at least for Platinum for you to be able to do the uh, video call authentication. So we'll set up the mobile key this is going to be one that is just stored in the Casa app itself, just on your mobile. There we go. 
that's done. Now this says home, office, and safe. And these devices obviously don't have to live in these places, but the idea here is that you don't just have all of the keys for your multi-sig setup stored in one location. You've actually spread them out a bit so that one uh, event can't just take them all out at once. So for this video, I'll basically just use a keystone, a ledger, and a cold card, just because that'll demonstrate the three different ways of interacting with this wallet. So we'll just say Keystone first. So basically you'll need to have your Keystone set up and running the Bitcoin only firmware. And I've run through how to do that in this video here. So we'll say continue. Now we're gonna scan the code from our Keystone. So basically on our Keystone, we're just gonna click the menu button. We're gonna say multi-sig wallet. And uh, you'll notice this one is just on generic mode. So what we wanna do is press that and go onto CASA mode. And we are going to export the XPUB. So this is the QR code that we wanna scan with the app. There we go. So that's just done, just like that. We'll set up the office key just as a ledger. Now what's gonna happen here is when I say let's go, it is actually going to send us an email. So basically we get sent an email that looks like this and we're gonna say connect to your device now. connect there we go that worked and we can actually see that the app here over on the mobile has worked that out straight away as well all right and we'll just set up the safe key just as a cold card so i'll just say cold card and say continue say let's go now just like with the ledger it is going to send us an email there we go so we'll just say connect Basically, we just have to follow this procedure on the screen here on our cold card. So look, we'll just unlock the cold card. Okay, so we'll go into advanced. Micro SD. And we are going to dump a summary. And that gives all of the information about this wallet there we'll say yes we want to do that done so we can now take this out stick it in our computer and then basically we want to copy this file public.txt from the memory card onto there and there we go that worked so we now have our multi-sig wallet set up here in the casa app and there we go. So now we have these five different keys that are all forming a single wallet. And it actually functions very similar to a normal wallet. Once you've finished creating your wallet, you'll get sent an email with what's called sovereign recovery information. Basically, this is everything you need to know to recover the wallet if Casa were to disappear. If you're only using Casa Gold, you can still do a two of three multi-sig and the process is the same. One of the additional options that's there for a basic multi-sig setup is to switch the key setup. And the advantage here is that rather than have a single entity uh, responsible for generating or storing uh, the keys in terms of the mobile app or the Casa app, you can actually just use two of your own hardware keys. Uh, again, meaning that you're only trusting Casa to generate one of the three sets of private keys. Though the big advantage with Casa is that all the complexity with moving from one multi-sig wallet to another is basically handled for you. So you can start out with this type of wallet and then once you have a second hardware wallet, you can just switch your key setup, uh, go through that process of adding your new hardware wallet and basically then automatically move all the funds from the old wallet to the new. And you can do that at any time. The other thing that's different with Casa Gold is the recovery key doesn't use a photo or anything like that, but actually has some security questions. So basically you set the security questions that you could answer here. Really good idea just to avoid things that people could find on your Facebook profile. And there we go. Once I've set it up and I can just hit receive. And there we go. So if I wanna send some funds, basically that just works like a normal wallet. So let's just send a hundred dollars. We'll just scan the QR code. 
And there we go. So there's the transaction. Time to sign the transaction. So basically the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sign it with the mobile app. And that's the first signature added. Now we actually need to add three signatures for this one. So we're not gonna worry about the recovery key. We're just gonna use two of our other ones. So we're gonna say sign with Keystone. So in our Keystone, we're in the multi-sig and the caster screens. We're just gonna click that there to scan the QR code. And there we go. And there we go. So that's the transaction there. So we can just say sign. We'll put in our wallet password. We'll say continue. So now we scan it back like that. And there we go, just like that. So that is the transaction signed from our Keystone. Nice and easy, only need to use our mobile. So we'll also add another signature. So for this one, we're gonna to have to use one of our hardware devices. So we'll same email as before. And just because juggling SD cards is a pain in the bum, we'll just use the ledger. Sign transaction. There we go. So we can review the transaction on our ledger. We can accept, review the transaction plus the change. The details of that are also on our CASA app. So we wanna make sure that what's on here matches what's on there. There we go. And there we go, and the transaction is done. So we can say complete transaction, and those funds are sent. One of the other really useful things that the CASA app does is it will periodically get you to do a health check. So basically, we can actually perform that at any time. So I could just say perform health check, and it will basically give me a QR code that I need to scan. So I'll just go into the keystone and say perform health check. Scan, click the scan QR code button. So I have to scan that QR code and I'm essentially signing a message. So I'll say sign. So what this is forcing me to do is to prove that I can still successfully sign transactions with this hardware wallet. So I can just say continue it scanned and then it'll check it there and say that yes, you have confirmed the health of your home key. So that is fantastic. One of the other really useful things about CASA is it makes it really easy to swap one of your keys out. So let's just say the key that was living at the office went missing and we wanted to replace it. So I can just say replace key and it will basically tell you uh, some important information about what happens when you replace the device. And if you're happy with all of that and still want to replace it, we'll say yes. And the important thing to mention here is that you can actually still keep using your wallet even without one of the keys, but you will really want to replace that key to restore the full level of redundancy back to your wallet. So we'll just say, begin replacement process. Hey, and look, this time around, we'll actually just replace that with a Trezor, but we'll just say, continue. We'll say, let's go. And basically it's gonna shoot us an email. And basically we're gonna do the same process as before. All right, so basically we'll say, this time we're gonna say we have a Trezor. We'll say continue. Allow once, export. Just won't worry about a passphrase. And there we go. So now we've actually reconfigured our multi-sig setup and replaced the key from the ledger with the key on the Trezor. And then what happens is you'll get this message here that says funds transfer required. Essentially what this will do is transfer all of the funds from the old wallet onto the new one. 
So we'll just say tap to add signatures. So we'll just go through and sign with the ones we still have. So for example, we still have the keystone, so we'll sign with that. And look, we'll also add one from the cold card just to demonstrate what that looks like. In this case, we'll say we have a cold card. And we'll download the transaction. We'll just stick it straight on the memory card. And then we follow the instructions. Now we'll make sure that we've got trust PSBT on. because you do need to do that when you're using it with CASA. There we go, we'll set ours to trust PSBT. And let's sign that transaction. There's only one on there, so it'll just automatically find the same one. We can verify that is our transaction. Say OK. There we go. Now we'll say next. And there is our signed transaction there with hyphen part at the end. So we'll just stick that there. And that worked. And so we can just say complete transaction. And it says recovery complete. So basically now it's just sent all of the funds from our old multi-sig wallet to our new one. The other thing that's handy to know is even after you've rotated your keys to a new account, you can actually view your archived key sets. So these are all of your previous multi-sig wallets and uh, that's handy just in case you accidentally send funds to an old address. Uh, the other thing that's good to know is you can also add sub accounts. Um, how many of them you can add will depend on your account tier but basically they are a separate balance from your primary account. And you've also got all the usual things you'd expect in the options with a number of different fiat currencies available. You can also use Testnet, which is fantastic if you want to learn how this stuff works without the risk of losing actual funds. You can also do things like hide your balances, resend the sovereign recovery info if you want it, uh, and so on. You can also buy Bitcoin directly through the app itself, and there's a few ways you can fund that. In addition to the recovery info that they give you for the private keys that CASA holds or their app generates, uh, it is also a good idea to back up the public keys for your other signers as well as the derivation parts. So in this case, it's worth backing up going into say for example the office key that's the trezor say view public keys select btc account and to copy this information here or even just take a screenshot of it and to print it out and to keep that as well and to do that for all of the devices look as long as cars are around they store this information for you that's what they're there for but it is worth having a copy of all of this on your own just in case uh, they disappear suddenly for any reason or you lose access to your CASA account. So there we go. So CASA offer a fantastic product. It's affordable, it's easy to use, and it allows you to retain control of your account at all times. Their basic level of product, their two of three multi-sig, also allows you to reuse your existing hardware wallet uh, as well as getting some understanding about how multi-sig works, how to do it securely, how to uh, maintain those sorts of things. They also offer higher end plans that include features that can be useful for things like estate planning, which depending on how much crypto you have and how tech savvy your family is, might be a really important consideration just on its own. For their higher tier subscriptions, they also just send you everything you need. So if you're someone who maybe has realized that you've got a huge amount of crypto that you don't know how to secure, uh, just essentially buying into their platinum or higher level can be a fantastic way to uh, very quickly be able to secure your funds to be able to learn and understand how to do that properly and be guided along the way. If you think CASA would be helpful to boost your security, uh, I've got a referral link in the description which can help me out in the process as well as get yourself a bit of a discount at the same time. Likewise, if you're looking to move to a two of three multi-sig setup and want to purchase an additional hardware wallet, there are affiliate links for those in the description as well. If you've got any questions about their service or any feedback from your experience using it, definitely just leave something in the comments. I do my best to reply to everything.
Thanks for watching, I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.